Hey, what's up everybody? Clayton here with Go Analytics, and today we're talking about filtering in Power BI. So, slicers or filter pane? Let's get started. Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. All right, so today we're talking about filtering in Power BI. So filtering is one of the most powerful features in Power BI, actually. It allows users to create custom views and dive deeper into their data. And Power BI offers us two primary methods of filtering data. It offers us in-page filtering with the slicers visual, and it allows us to do off-page filtering using the filter pane. Both of these methods have their benefits and their drawbacks, and we're going to explore what those are today, as well as talk about some of the best practices when you're trying to create filtering usability for your end users. So let's get started. Let's head on over to my laptop and we'll talk about it a little bit more. All right. So the first method to provide filterability in your Power BI reports is in page filtering using slicers. So what that means is placing the slicer visual right onto the report canvas. And uh, that allows for direct interactivity where the user can select a field and be able to filter visuals on that report page right away. For example, a user might be able to filter different regions, different product categories, and so on, and see the immediate impact of making those changes. All right, so what are the benefits of using in-page filtering with slicers? Well, one of the key ones is that it's very user-friendly. So it allows users to directly see those slicers right onto the report canvas and be able to interact with those right away. It also provides real-time feedback as soon as a user changes a selection on a slicer, they'll see the impact on the visuals right away. It also allows for more customization in terms of being flexible for you to design it to look exactly as you wish. So there's a, a couple of different options. You have the normal slicer visual as well as the tile slicer. And both of these allow for a great deal of customization when you're trying to get that perfect design in your Power BI report. And also slicers are perfect for specific context. So if you want to have a slicer that only interacts with one visual, you can do that by setting up different interactivity across slicers and different visuals. So those are kind of the main benefits of using in-page filtering with slicers. Now, what about the drawbacks? Well, there are some as well. So let's explore some of those. The main drawback of using slicers in your report pages is that it consumes space. That's right. It's taking up your canvas real estate to provide your users with filterability. The second drawback is that it also is limited in scalability. So if you have a lot of dimensions that you want your users to filter by, you might end up with a cluttered report page if you're trying to put all of those slicers onto a report page. And lastly, it also involves duplicate effort. If you're creating multiple report pages that use the same slicer, you might end up having to either start from scratch in designing those slicers or at the very least be copying them and pasting them into your report canvas, into the different pages where that is supposed to go. All right, the second option that we have for creating filterability in Power BI is off-page filtering using the filter pane. So this is a built-in feature that Power BI has created that allows us to add different dimension fields to filter a specific visual, the entire page, or all pages across our report. So what are the benefits of using the filter pane? Well, for number one, it saves us on canvas space. Because this is a built-in feature off the page, 
we have our entire canvas just for visualizations, which is quite nice. The second benefit is that it is scalable. You can add many fields to the slicer pane and still be able to filter by all those fields without cluttering the report page and messing up with your user experience. And lastly, it can be a consistent option which carries over across all of our report pages. So given all these good benefits for the filter pane, what are some of the drawbacks? Well, let's explore some of these. The main drawback with the filter pane is that it is hidden. And that can be a pretty significant drawback as new users to Power BI might not be able to quickly see that they can use that for a filtering experience. Also, it has limited customization for the look and feel, although there are some customization that you can do, such as changing the background colors, changing the fonts, and that type of look and feel, you can't really change the user experience on it. And lastly, one of the drawbacks might be that you have to provide training to your end users, especially for organizations that are just starting out with Power BI. It might not be as intuitive as slicers that users can use the filter pane to filter their data. All right, so now that we know the benefits and drawbacks of each method of filtering in Power BI, you might be still wondering, okay, so which one should I use? And the answer to that question is, well, it depends. It really depends on your specific use case. But as a general guideline, one of the things that you can think about is if you require interactivity from your end users, as well as if you're dealing with new Power BI users, then the slicer option might be a better idea, as well as if you're just working with a few fields to filter, then you might consider using slicers. But on the other hand, if you require a lot of fields to be filtered and you are faced limitations in terms of canvas space, then the filter pane might be an option. Another option you might consider is combining both of these filtering options in your next Power BI report. You can use slicers for fields that will change frequently, that requires a high level of interactivity within the report, and you can use the filter pane for fields that don't change that often. Think um, branches or regions where a user might set it for themselves and not have to change that very often. So they might go ahead and change that once, and then the other filters are on the page and they're able to interact with those. So those are the two filtering options that are available in Power BI. Now, when it comes to filtering, you might want to consider this a little bit more broadly, and we wanted to give you just a few best practices to think about before you even start with your filtering endeavor in Power BI. First thing you wanna think about is you want to prioritize the user experience. Make sure that whichever method it is that you choose, it's going to optimize how your users interact with the report, and it's going to create an experience that's enjoyable for them that they'll love using over and over again. The second thing is to test for performance. Make sure that your filtering options do not slow down your report from loading. So if you're crowding too many slicers onto that report page and it's slowing everything down, maybe it's time to rethink all those slicers. The third thing is keep it simple. You don't have to overcomplicate a Power BI report. In fact, the most effective reports are the ones that keep it simple, a few slicers on a page, few visuals, and you've got an audience that's willing to use that report. And the fourth thing is educate your users. Be sure to always let them know that there is a filter pane available to them let them know how to use slicers on the report page so that they can get the most insights out of your Power BI report. So that's it. Those are the two options of filtering data in Power BI. You have the option of doing it in the report page or off the report page. 
Now tell us, are you team slicer or are you team filter pane? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video.